political debate often reaches a deadlock, both sides having different understandings of the same terms. It's like they're speaking a different language, both sides asserting their definition is correct, rather than focus on what the discussion was originally about. The purpose of the Defining Terms series is to be a reference, to explore terms, philosophies, and ideas, and explore their history, what they are, and why people believe them. I want to lead with my biases. I am an anarcho-capitalist. Nevertheless, I will do my due diligence to be as fair and unbiased as possible, even for philosophies I strongly disagree with. My goal being to eventually define communism in such a way that communists regard my definition as fair. The purpose is not to make arguments for or against, simply to state definitions. I won't be able to make the end-all be-all dictionary definition, but I can try. In this video, we will be exploring the non-aggression principle, often abbreviated the NAP or the NAP. The NAP has its roots in classical liberalism. In 1689, the classical liberal political philosopher John Locke wrote the following in his second treatise of government. Being all equal and independent, no one ought to harm another in his life, health, liberty, or possessions. Thomas Jefferson wrote in the letter to Francis Gilmore, No man has a natural right to commit aggression on the equal terms of another, and this is all from which the laws ought to restrain him. Perhaps the most concise definition, in my opinion, is cited by Albert J. Nock, who was summarizing Thomas Paine's pamphlet, Common Sense, and what Nock believed Paine's view of the government's role should be, referencing the character of King Passol from the French opera The Adventures of King Passol. The titular King's Law had only two parts, hurt no man, then do as you please. The NAP is a universalist set of ethical values that argues aggression is inherently illegitimate. But then, what is aggression? Aggression is the initiation of coercion. Coercion being deliberate action, either through violence, threat, or deception, to alter someone's condition against their will. Thus, the NAP states that it is unethical to initiate force or coercion. Put simply, don't hit first, hit last. Self-defense, or defending another against an aggressor, is perfectly legitimate. Libertarians and anarcho-capitalists use the NAP as the ethical basis for the philosophy, among other arguments I will explore in a later video. Rather than just guiding interpersonal relationships, the NAP should also apply to institutions. They argue government, in its present form, violates the non-aggression principle and is therefore unethical, their argument being that laws coerce behavior, as taxes violate property rights. Therefore, it is legitimate to ask that the government be eliminated completely, society governed socially by the non-aggression principle, or reduced in such a way that its ability to intervene in society only do so to stop unethical behavior, as defined by the NAP. In summary, the non-aggression principle. Cause no harm, then do as you please.